I'm Gloria Strode and welcome to Straightforward. Today we're on location in Macon, Georgia, and we're visiting with some of our wonderful friends at Lundy Chapel. And today joining me is my new friend, an awesome woman, a walking miracle, the one and only Shay Ingram. Welcome, Shay. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. I am so happy to have met you. Uh, during uh, the fall season, I uh, had the pleasure of uh, visiting uh, Lundy Chapel uh, with Congressman Bishop and, and the team from the 2nd Congressional District, and I met your father, uh, who is Pastor Corbett, yes, and he is also the president of the Georgia Missionary Baptist Organization as well. Mm -hmm. uh, but during his powerful sermon, he mentioned that his daughter was this wonderful, miraculous woman of God that had survived a transplant of a kidney and a pancreas. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am, it is. And you just had your 28th birthday. And the story is it's, it's just uh, something that just hearing you speak this morning, of course, we've been here for a workshop. It's just been a wonderful morning of fellowship and learning. Uh, but just to hear you say you made Christmas, you made New Year's, and you just made your birthday. Because on this journey, last year, you didn't. You were in the hospital. And then even since all of that, you lost your sight, but you're still a woman of faith and strength and just a wonderful testimony. So how did, I'm going to need you to speak a little louder because we got a lot of activity in the building and wonderful young babies and being energetic. So I want to make sure that everybody hears your, your wonderful testimony. When did your illness start? Uh, I heard it this morning, but I want you to share it with our audience. Well, um, with me, I had type 1 diabetes, and I first found that I was a diabetic at the age of 12. Okay, so you had it as a, as a young child. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And so, from there, and everybody said how you, what, you sung in the choir, you sang worked. in the choir, I danced, um, I volunteered at our summer camp program during the summer, I volunteered at the recreation department, um, I just helped out with a lot of events that we had periodly at the church. And you were active. Yes, ma'am. But you had diabetes since age 12. Yes, and then it was the diabetes that was uh, was not controlled that actually led to the kidney failure and the, the, the pancreas. Is that what happened? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So when did you notice some change in your body? Were you just going along doing your normal thing? And well, how actually, old were you at that time? I was 23. Mm -hmm. And I was um actually on my junior year of college. Really? At South Georgia State College in Douglas, Georgia. Okay. And um, when I came home for the summer, I started having a lot of stomach problems. Mm -hmm. And um. Back and forth in and out of the hospital the entire summer. And then when I went back to school in August, I roommate with my best friend. Mm -hmm. And she noticed that I was spending more time in the hospital room than in the classroom. Really? So she snuck behind my back, even though I told her not to. <laughs> well, she was a good friend. And she called was a good my friend. mom and dad. Mm -hmm. And later on that night, my mom and my sisters surprised me at school mm -hmm. and came and got me and I had to end up withdrawing from school. Because of your illness. Yes. But I mean, you know, that's one thing about school. We can stop out, we can drop out, but what? We can always, we can always go, go back. back. So that was the least of our problem, right? Yes, but I know for you in terms of achieving your goal, I'm sure that was, and everything I've heard about you today on this visit here, you were focused and you had goals and you worked hard toward them. So you were a little disappointed about having to leave after you had put in so much oh, yes. time. I was very kind of upset 
that you would have to withdraw. But we need it for you, what? To get your health taken care of so you could live, to be here, to share this awesome story. I mean, I, I could hardly stay in my seat this morning when you were speaking, when you opened up the event. So you, were, you left school and then you started this medical journey. Yes, ma'am. Um, it started um, actually at the beginning of 2018. Mm -hmm. um, back in February, March, I started noticing my vision was going blurry. Really? And so I saw my mom. She made me eye doctor's appointment, and they told me that, okay, you need glasses. Mm -hmm. I had wore glasses for two weeks. And one night I went to bed, woke up the next morning, my glasses didn't work no more. Really? So were they saying this is a side effect of the diabetes? Was it? Well, they was thinking that maybe I just needed a different prescription. Mm -hmm. But once they did a lot of tests and ran a lot of labs, they found that um, I had tissue built up behind my eyes. Okay. That was covering basically my eyesight. Okay. Due to having high blood sugars and a very high A1C. Okay, A1C. So you're going to teach us about all of this. And we and the reason I want to talk about with your age is because sometimes when we're young, I used to be young and fabulous like you, <laughs> we think we're invincible and we just don't pay attention sometimes. Uh, but your story, uh, again, you're, it's a miracle. Uh, but your story is one that we have to use to teach young people that, yes, we're young, but we still have to listen and pay attention to what our bodies are saying, right? Mm -hmm. So with your vision, had you noticed that the glasses were not as good as you thought before you just woke up one day and they were not working? Honestly, I thought that maybe the doctor gave me the wrong prescription. Okay. And then, I mean, still at that point in time, as I looked around, looking at my nieces and nephews and my mm -hmm. friends running around, they eat all candy and cake and right. cookies. What makes me different from them? If they right. can do it, why can't I? Exactly. I got you. And it's like, okay, well, this it's got to be okay because they seem to be okay. So I should be able to just continue in the way, you know, that we've been doing. Well, what we're going to do before we go deeper into the story, because this is such a great story, and I want you to share all parts. We're going to go to our first break to our sponsors, and we'll be right back. And you're doing awesome. All right. We'll be right back after word from some of our sponsors. Straightforward is brought to you by State Senator Ed Harbison, serving the citizens of Georgia's 15th Senatorial District and on the front lines for veterans every day. Progressive Funeral Home, family owned and operated since 1952. The George Ford legacy of high standards continues today. In the compassionate and professional services provided, a touch of dignity for those who care. Progressive Funeral Home, 4235 St. Mary's Road, trusted by generations. The Columbus Memory Center, 7196 North Lake Drive, Suite A, Columbus. Dr. Jonathan Liss is a board-certified neurologist and sleep specialist committed to battling Alzheimer's by preserving independence, offering you the opportunity to get your memory number for free, the only vital sign for brain health. Call today at 706-327-4000 or visit columbusmemorycenter.com. Welcome back to Straightforward. I'm continuing this wonderful, heartfelt conversation with my new awesome friend, Shay Ingram. Shay, you are amazing. I feel so inspired. Uh, the days that I think I can't go on, I can always remember this time that we shared with you today in the morning workshop and during this interview. And uh, you give me hope. You are inspiration. You are a walking miracle. You are everything that your father, Pastor Corbett, said that you were. And I'm just so thankful that you would take the time uh, to do this interview uh, with us. So you lost your sight before you had the transplants. Yes, ma'am. At that time, you didn't realize you were in that much medical trouble. No, ma'am. Okay. 
And so what happened when we went from, we lost the sight, so you had to adjust to losing the sight. Yes, and then what happened? When did the kidney failure come? It started the summer of 2018 um, when my dad noticed that I was bloated. Mm -hmm. I had a lot of fluid on me. Like my legs and my feet was triple the size. Really? I was normally. Mm -hmm. Every time I walked, it hurt. Like I was in so much pain. And so you my had dad fluid, it, it was swelling, and it was tender, and you were very uncomfortable. Yes, ma'am. So it's a blessing that you left college. Because had you been at college, I just don't think that we would have had the sight on you that your parents had. And I heard your testimony this morning that your parents never let you give up. Never let you give up. So it was good that your dad noticed that. And so then you went to the doctor? I went to the doctor. And um, the first time I went was actually July the 4th. Uh -huh. After we got finished watching the fireworks and my daddy noticed that I was in a lot of pain, uh -huh. he rushed me on to the emergency room. Uh -huh. Then they said, um, they gave me some LASIK which is water pills. Right. And it was just like, you know, it just fluid. She'll urinate off and she'll be good. Mm -hmm. But then July the 5th, my sister noticed I was going in and out. I wasn't feeling good. Mm -hmm. So my sister rushed me back to the hospital and the doctor came in and told my mom and them that they had to rush me to the main hospital mm -hmm. because I had 14 liters of fluid around my heart and lungs. Really? Wow. And so it was your sister that saw you were lethargic when you say you just wasn't yourself. Yes, so it was good that she wasn't so caught up in her life that she couldn't pay attention to you because you're her younger sister? I'm the baby. Oh, the baby. No wonder dad keeps eyes on you. <laughs> Daddy's baby girl. Okay. Well, I'm daddy's baby girl, so I don't have no shame with that. I'm with that. Oh, my goodness. And so... Uh, your big sister, she she noticed. And so you went and you had fluid around your heart. And they were going to, you went to the main hospital. Yes, ma'am. And that's here in Macon? Yes, ma'am. Okay. I ain't call it Sim, but now it's Main Piedmont. Okay, Piedmont is everywhere now. And so they started working on drawing off those that fluid. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. In the midst of them doing that, um, they called and told my mom and dad that, um, I was at borderline for kidney failure, mm -hmm. and that I was only going to do a couple of treatments of dialysis, mm -hmm. and I would have been okay. Mm -hmm. But those couple of treatments turned to days, mm -hmm. into weeks, and into months. Mm -hmm. Then um, once I started dialysis, and I was on dialysis till like October of 2018. Two weeks later, the doctor came back and said that I had um, stage one kidney failure. Really? And so when you were on dialysis, were you on it twice a week or three times a week? Three times a week. Three times a week. And so did you do it in home or you went to a dialysis center? I went to a dialysis center. And so here you were, this 20-something year old, former college student, and you had no idea you ended up in the dialysis center, which for our young people, and I'm speaking to the young people, we think that we're young, we're invincible, you know, and all of that. And so if it happened to the wonderful Shay, then it could happen to any young person. Yes, and so that's why I wanted you to share your story. Because, you know, our kids go off to college and have roommates. You know, I'm a graduate of Albany State. And so I lived in the dorm. No, really. And it's important to have people that's helping to look out for you. Yes, right. Okay, and so then you went on the dialysis. How long were you on dialysis? From 2018 to 2021. In order to get the, so you went from stage one to stage four. Renal. Yes, ma'am. Okay, and then you needed a transplant. Yes, ma'am. A kidney transplant and then a pancreas transplant. Yes, so how did you feel about that? That was a shock. Wasn't it? I'm sure. It was. It was very depressing because, I mean, with dialysis, that took away a lot from me. Flexibility to move around and go in places, right? Because you got to be near a place where you can do the dialysis if you're yes, not doing it at home. Did you have perio or the hemo? 
hemo. You did the hemo. Okay, so that's 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 a lot. It takes a lot out of your body. It makes you tired. But you were what? Still young, twenty something. That's why we're looking at your fabulous self today. <laughs> <laughs> with your beautiful skin. I was talking to you about that in the sidebar. And so when they said you had to uh, get the transplant, how did you prepare yourself? Because I already heard about you being a woman of faith and how you've always worked. Well, I was scared about it, but then once they told me that with the um, transplant, if I get a kidney, that it cured the kidney failure, and then with a pancreas, it would have cured the diabetes. Uh -huh. So I'm like, okay, I could kill two birds in one time. <laughs> I think Jay. I might need to take this day. <laughs> Jay, you gonna kill two birds with one stone. No, that's a good way of looking at it. And I, and I like that humor about it because it is it can be overwhelming as a mother and I have a child to just even hear that. But for you, we're like, okay, well, if I could kill two birds with one stone, I'm gonna take that deal. I like that. Yeah. So, anyway, uh, you had the support of your best friend. Yes, ma'am. And you all are still friends today. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, and that's very important because we need our parents and our siblings. But sometimes a friend is just the medicine we need. Wouldn't you agree yes, to that? Yes, ma'am. Without my friend, I probably wouldn't even be here. Okay. Well, see, no, that's it. Because there are things you can talk to her about that you don't want to talk to your parents, you know, your siblings about. Yes, it's just a different type of fellowship when you're just talking to a friend. So, well, what we're gonna do right now, we're gonna go to our final break to our sponsors and we'll be right back. We'll be right back after word from some of our sponsors. Apple Tax Services, for the best in tax preparation. 7413 Whitesville Road, Columbus. Call for your appointment today at 706-243-2590 or 706-243-2595. And remember, an apple a day keeps the audits away. The Miley Agency, 4903 Armor Road. Gerald L. Miley and William Ripsinger have been providing comprehensive reviews and insuring families in Georgia and Alabama for more than 50 years. The Miley Agency will work nonstop to find you the best policy at the best price. You can rest assured that your information is secure, confidential, and protected. Call today at 706-996-2045. And welcome back to Straightforward. I'm continuing this fantastic visit with my new friend, Shay Ingram. Shay is the woman that's going to keep me on track. I will not and I, I won't complain. I have nothing to complain about because you walk through literally the valley of the shadow of death. That's your testimony. Because several times you said that you die, you, you, you stop breathing. And you're here. So those days when I feel like I can't make it, I just got to pull out my phone and look at the picture that I took of you this morning and, and encourage myself. So with all of those surgeries, you shared earlier uh, in the workshop that you stopped breathing. Yes, ma'am. Was that one time or two times? Well, out of it, I have had 13 surgeries. 13 surgeries. And 22 procedures. 22 procedures. And out of all of them, out of the 13 surgeries, 10 of them, and then out of the procedures, I think it was 16 of them, I stopped breathing on the paper while it was operating. Really? Yes, ma'am. But you had a praying mama and a dynamic father, Pastor Corbett, and this the baby girl. See, I didn't know you were the baby girl. I thought you and I were going to be able to do something, but I don't think he, he don't trust me well enough <laughs> to let me take the baby girl. Maybe one of those other kids he got, but not you. <laughs> right. And so your parents, I know it had to be a lot for them. It was. I mean, going through this journey, I was glad that I wasn't alone. I had a great support system. System. dynamic support team. Mm hmm and I really recommend my mom and dad because even though they was going through what they was going through, they pushed that aside just for me. To take care of baby girl. And so your siblings have all supported you, your church family. I've been blessed to meet some of them. And I told some of them, they're stuck with me now. It's like, mm -hmm. I think I can just come over here to make them whenever I get rid. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't have to get permission or, or, or be announced. Uh, but 
your village, they've all embraced you. Yeah. Right. And so you had the, did you get the pancreas and the kidney at the same time? Yes, ma'am, I did. Woo, that was a long surgery, wasn't it? It took about six hours. Okay, only six. Okay, because you're young. All right. And so how long were you in the hospital with recovery? Well, honestly, ever since I had the transplant December the 11th, 2021, uh -huh. I was in and out of the hospital most of the time. Most of the time. And so that's what you were sharing in the workshop. You had missed Christmas, New Year's, and your birthday. Yes, ma'am. Of the end of 2021 going into 2022. Yes, but this year, hello, somebody. Victory, you had what? Christmas, Christmas New Year's, New Year's and just had birthday. your 28th birthday. Yes. And so you were able to make up for the time that you spent in the hospital. Yes, right. But even in the hospital, I know that you made friends there because you, your spirit is just so positive. I mean, the light and the love that, you know, when you walk into the room, it's just there. So you kind of had your own village there at the hospital as well, I'm sure. All the nurses and my CNAs, even the cafeteria people at Piedmont Atlanta, like, became a big family. Right, because they, they were all bought in to your, your uh, recovery. Yes, ma'am. So what do you want to do from this? The Lord has restored you. He gave you an awesome testimony because what? You lost your vision in 2018. You have the transplant of a pancreas and a kidney in 2020, 21. 21. You're here at your father's uh, and your family uh, worship center doing a workshop. How about that? In January <laughs> of 2023. No, really, if people just track that, that that's miraculous. Wouldn't you think that's a miracle? You're a walking miracle. Yeah, to go from all of that, most people's bodies would not survive that. So what is it that you think your mission is now? I want you to share that. I mean, tell my story and try to help the next person that's saying that no matter what you're going through, take your medicine. Take Do your right. medicine. I understand some of us may not want to, we don't feel like it, but at the end of the day, is what you need to survive. Take your medicine and do right. You got to exercise, you got to eat, eat right, right, and take your rest. And you got to get some rest. You can't burn the candle at both ends, even though if we're young people, right? Yeah. Because anything can happen. Anything can happen. So what about school? So I know you've lost your sight, but we can do college in Braille now. Everything is, and I have some friends um, that know so much about um, working with people with Disability, they know where all the resources are. Mm -hmm. So now that I know you, honey, I'm going to wear them out with that. We got to know where everything that you need. I have no shame. You've already figured that out, right? Yes, so whatever I can do to help you with continuing that journey. So when are we going to finish college? Since I want to go back to school. I was going for pediatric nursing. Okay. I love kids. Um, I really want to start back in school at least like next year. Okay. So maybe we should just take a class or two to get our feet wet. Yes, and we might have to do it remotely. Because I don't think Pastor Corbett is going to let you go somewhere where he can't like lay eyes on you. <laughs> Not the baby girl. I don't think he's ready for that. You know what I'm saying? Yes, but I, I think that maybe taking uh, a few courses and taking them online and then, you know, having a vocational rehab and all of the other uh, resources that the state provides. Yes, I know people, I have great friends that work with uh, people that have special needs, and I have no problem in asking them to help us find whatever those resources are so you can get back on that journey. We don't have to ride the horse fast now. Mm -hmm. We can just go at a pony's pace. Because, you know, once you stop learning, you know, being in school, it's a lot on your body, you know, being up, and, and it's very demanding. So I, I am offering myself to help you in any kind of way. Whatever you want to do, you let me know, and we're going to figure it out. 
Because I know your dad got your spiritual side and your spiritual family, they got you on that. But if whatever the dream is, you want to do it, I'm signing up publicly to be a part of that dream because you have truly been an inspiration today. So what are your parting words? I just want everyone to know that keep your faith. God is real. That man above is real. I am a walking testimony. Without him, I wouldn't be seeing it today. All right. As many times I wanted to give up, I lost faith. Mm -hmm. He always brought me back. All right. And that's someone that have survived losing your sight. How many surgeries? Thir 13 surgeries. You've had a pancreatic transplant and a kidney transplant. Mm -hmm. And then you've helped facilitate a workshop today. That's what I'm saying. That's my kind of girl. Well, thank you so much. You are a pure joy. You give me so much hope and inspiration. And again, publicly, I am fully committed to whatever dream you want to see. I'm down. Ten toes to the ground. All right. No, thank you. This has been straightforward. If you don't stand for something, you will fall for anything. Until next time, be blessed. What up, world? What's up, Columbus? Be sure to tune in every Sunday, straight forward with Gloria Strode, right here on NBC 38.